our today's session on teaching and learning anatomy virtually. We are here today to share with you a faculty perspective on how to integrate the new curriculum in your teaching module and enhancing the overall teaching learning experience. Our speaker will also talk to you about teaching virtual dissections to the students when there is either lack of faculty classes or availability of the tablet in the lab. At the end of the session, the speaker will take up some live Q&A. So if you have any question to ask during the session, then please write it in the Q&A tab on your screen. With no further delay, I would like to introduce to you our speaker of the day, Dr. Dushyant Agrawal. Dr. Dushyant is currently working as an additional professor of anatomy and sub dean for examinations at the All India Institute of Medical Sciences, Jodhpur. He is also a visiting professor at the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. Dublin. Before this, he also had teaching experience in other reputed institutes like LLRM Medical College in Madrid and Tirthanta Mahavir Medical College in Muradabad. His major areas of interest constitute interactive medical education, radiological anatomy, and psychogenetics. He is currently doing a research on karyotyping and fish analysis. Dr. Dushan is a member of Curriculum Committee of UG and PG courses and an executive committee member of UP chapter of Anatomical Society of India. He is also a member of International Federation of Association of Anatomists, College of Representatives. He is an editorial board member and reviewer of many reputed Indian and international journals of anatomy. Dr. Dushyant has received many awards and recognitions in his career so far. Some of the awards are Rajneer Gaurav Award and Best Citizen Award of India in 2016, the Best Teacher Award by Rotary Club of Rotary, and Appreciation Award by Tatya University in Sri Ganganagar. He also got the ICMR Travel Ground to present research work in Istanbul uh, liver imaging course and meeting. Uh, let me stop here and now uh, uh, let me hand it over to Dr. Dushan to take it up from here and start the session. Welcome, Dr. Dushan. Thank you, Priyanka. Uh, I think I, I can start now. Yes, sir. Okay. So, welcome all. Very good afternoon. Okay. So, today's session is actually for the anatomy. How can we go virtually? Because from a last one and a half year in the during time of COVID, we are actually rely on the virtual field more than what the physical one are there. So considering the anatomy in a medical education, we are actually having far away from the real cadaver. Okay. So there are both things are there. Some colleagues do not have the cadaver and some which are having a cadaver, but in this time of the pandemic, we are always is going to virtually. So at that time of virtual interaction with the students, we actually needed to fulfill the all the competency which actually are designed or getting approved by the National Medical Commission, which was earlier was the MCA, Medical Council of India. So as we know that NMC is actually make the whole of the syllabus of the anatomy, the human anatomy and the competency based, which actually having the some domains based on the knowledge, skill, aptitude and communication and having the different level of the competency. Okay. So how can we just fulfill or reach to complete this competency which actually will help to student to go for their particular skill based assessment and also for their clinical profile. So that's why taking a one example today. Now I just planned here today session with some competencies related to the, the thorax. Okay. So in which I will go through the one competency which actually having the number 21.1 having related to the osteology part in which we will go for sternum, rib, first rib, typical thoracic vertebra. The another is also for the atypical ribs and the vertebra, thoracic vertebra. The third one will be discuss about the some boundaries about the thoracic inlet, the cavity and outlet. And finally, we will go for the intercostal muscles, their attachment, their directions along with their nerves and the vessel. So we will start now today one by one. Okay. So I'm just now skipping to the software part. Okay. So because the whole of the session, we actually on depend on the software. Okay. So now the software, which I actually using here and uh, I'm using for at least for four years. Okay. That is a complete anatomy. Okay. Now it is actually is having marketing by the LGBR and I found this one is very good software. Okay. So starting with that, 
just want to tell you that I can, uh, you can see here, the, I'm just sharing your screen, you can see the software here. So there are various reasonable of the anatomies are there. So in which I just choose the full body because layer by layer, I will also see the, some other structure which are related to thorax can be seen here. Okay. So in that, what you can see here, the one thoracic cavity is showing here, the case is showing here. And suppose I just removing as a, all the system off. So whenever somebody wants to go for the, the first is about the osteology part, we have to just select the skeletal system. So if you see here, the skeletal system, they made it here, okay, by default. And if suppose we want to just take it only the thorax part, you can just make it thorax here, okay. But by defaultly, I want to just choose here the full body part. To add up here the costal cartilage, if you see here, there is no costal cartilage showing here. Yes, you can see. I'm just adding here the connected tissue. So you will see here the all the cartilage they get formed here. Okay. So first choosing here. So now at this time, what you can see here, you can just tell your student or any student can read that particular thing. What are the bones involved here? We can make it zoom here. You can see here there's a very good zoom is here. So you can see here the zoom. So in this, what you can see here, there is a bones which can be demonstrated that is a sternum you can see here and if you see on the left on the bar that you can see the description of the bone is also here okay so i'm not going to detail on that side so you can see the sternum part is here if you just going to rotate on the either side you can just found out the various ribs are there with their number just like that is the fourth rib third rib is here and if you go on the back toward the posterior aspect now you can see the scapula is showing here you the scapula and also the thoracic vertebras are there. Okay. So that is simply about the what the simply thoracic cage, which what we can see here. Okay. So first thing, how can we just make here the what the basically the bony structure we can see here in a proper way. So suppose I just choose here the sternum. Okay. There is one option that we can make the hide others. So whenever you make a hide others, you, what you will find except the sternum, all the structure they get lost away. During that time, when you just make it this way, if we want to mark it, that what is this structure to the student, you can just see that it is the manubrium. So you can just write down the manubrium. You can see this is the body. And this is the same way you can see the z process. So that's why one by one, you can also write down over it. And you can see the which part is where is here. Okay. So this is about the sternum. Same way, if somebody wants to go for the sternum in a posterior view, okay. So we can rotate here and you can see it's a lateral view showing the, the facet for the attachment of the coastal cartilages. And now we are on the back side, on the posterior view. Okay. So this is the way. Same time, suppose somebody wants to see that what are the muscular attachments are there. So in the software, there is one provision that you can go for the skeletal tap and you have to just go for some other. Sub points. Okay. Just a second. So now you can see here, you can see here. So red color origin insertion and blue color insertions they're getting here. So at that time, if you see over the sternum, the, all the aspect, you can just choose which actually area is for origin, just like that. This is showing the pectus major. If you see on the left top corner, it's showing the pectus major. Same way, if you go posteriorly, you can see the some other muscle, just like that. Sternohyoid origin, sternothyroid origin is also there. This is the attachment for transfer thoracic muscle. The lower down of Z-foot, it is the origin of diaphragm is there. Okay. Same way, if you see, we want to see insertion, it is a rectus abdominis muscle insertion is here, showing on the little aspect of the Z-foot process. So that is the way, how can we go for the osteology, in which we just go for the sternum part is here. Now, same way, if suppose you want to tell the student something around the sternal angle. So you can see simply that this is the sternum, and where the manubrium, where the manubrium and the body they get here, you will find that it's a sternal angle is there, right? Okay. Same time, suppose I want to add something just like that, the second rib with the costal cartilage. 
So I have to just write here the second rib and you can see on the left. So I just added here and same time, if suppose I want to go for the costal cartilage, you can see the only the structure with the rib, they can be seen here. So this is the way, how can we go virtually to basically demonstrate the bone. Okay. Now, second thing, which I want to share you that is about the ribs. That is very important because in which we can share the different part of the ribs in a proper view. Okay. So take an example of the typical rib. Okay. If you see here, this is the first rib, second rib, which are the atypical one are here. And this is from the third rib. We on up to the ninth rib, which are a typical rib. So I'm choosing here the third rib on the left side. Okay. So I am just again going on the hide others. So now you can say there is a left side rib can be seen here, which is showing it's in a proper view. And if you want to just make its rotation, simply say, this is the rotation of the rib. And now I am just zooming in. And now you can easily find out the different part of the rib here. You can see. Here. Okay. So at this stage, you can easily demonstrate your student or any student can learn the anatomy in a proper way that the different part of the typical rib, as we can see here, this is the part which is showing here representing the head. The part here is representing the neck. Same here, you can see the shaft is there. Okay, and somewhere here you will find the anterior end. So that's why you can just define the, all the part of the typical ribs. Same way, if you just go through it, you can also demonstrate the presence of the some facet. If you see here, the two facets are showing here, superior and the inferior facet. And as we know, these facets are actually for their articulation with the body of thoracic vertebra. So that's why you can see. On the neck, you can see this is a tubercle, which is having the articular part to make its <clears throat> Articulation with the nasal process of the vertebra. Okay. Same way, if we go for the under surface of the shaft, you can see here, this is the costal groove is showing here. At that time, if you want to say which muscle is going to attach here, you just have to make that to see the shifting here, and you can find the sub muscle attachment can be seen here. Okay. So you can see here. So this is the muscle attachment showing costal guru, innermost intercostal muscle. Downside is the internal intercostal muscle. This is here, the innermost intercostal insertion is here. The same way the other attachment can be seen here. So this is how the typical intercostal or typical uh, rib can be demonstrated. Now, second thing, what we want that we want to just make here, how the basic rib is going to articulate with the vertebra. So either there is a two way we can just select either we have to go for the whole of the bones together means no. You can see here again, we just make a whole of the skeletal system is there. Now what you can see here that whole the thoracic system is get created. And suppose I want to choose the third rib. Okay. So you can choose the third rib here or fourth rib here and at that same time, because the fourth rib will articulate with the T4 and the T3 vertebra. So you just, just go for a multi-selection, just see on the left, muscle section, and you choose the fourth and the third vertebra. And now you can make the hide others. So what you can see here, there is one vertebra articulating with the one part of the rib, other is articulating with the other part. So now you can easily demonstrate about the attachment or articulation of the rib with the vertebra. So in this case, what you can see here simply this way. So this is the third thoracic vertebra. This is the T4 is here and this is the rib that is the fourth rib is here. So if I just make it a turn here, you can just see here this way. Now you can see. So at that same time, what you can just see here, if I say this is a T3, this is a T4, this is a fourth rib. And now you can see 
that inferior facet present on the head of the fourth rib is articulated with the superior costal facet T4 and the facet which is present over the superior aspect of the head of the fourth rib is articulated with the inferior facet of the T3 on that same side. Yes. So easy the way you can just demonstrate about the rib articulation with the vertebra. Same way, sometime you want to just say that how the basic articulation can be seen clearly. So you have to just choose the, suppose the rib and just make it here fade. So when you just make a fade, that particular structure become the fade. And as a transparency mode, you can just see somehow mode in the depth. So you can see easily. You can see here, the rib is here in the fade mode. That is a transparent mode. And you can see the other addition can be seen here. So this is the another important feature that we can demonstrate the some other structure which are present deep to the some other. Okay. Now coming to the next, same way, if you see here, this particular rib is auto articulating with the what? Transverse process. So now you can see here. That the transverse process, this is a transverse process of the fourth vertebra. This is a transverse process of the fourth vertebra. It's articulating with the facet present over the tubercle on the fourth rib. So here, if you want to see, this is the fourth rib. This is the T4. This is a transverse process. And here you can say this is the facet present on the tubercle. So this is articulate. So now you can easily demonstrate about the attachment of the rib with a different part of the vertebra. Okay. Now coming to the next, the another thing we just displayed here, the first rib. Okay. Because we already have the ribs together in this way, but now I will choose here the first rib, the most atypical rib here. So I choose the first rib here and suppose I just make again, hide others. So now you can see the first rib, which is more horizontally get present here and atypical due to its some more feature which are getting here. Okay. So now just see here's the view. Now in this particular view, you can easily identify it's the two ends which can be seen here. Okay. Now you can see. So this is the posterior end, entry end and the chef part is here. And this way. So what you can see here again, showing here the first rib. This is the first rib. In that you can see here, this is the head part, the neck part and the shaft is there. And you will appreciate this is the only the single facet present on the head of the first tip you can demonstrate which is <clears throat> sorry articulating with the t1 the first thoracic vertebra same way you have the facet on the tubercle to articulate with the nasus process of the t1 okay now one more thing you have just have to see here about the some tubercle which is the peculiar feature for the first tip and that is scaling tubercle so if we just rotate this first strip in this way, suppose, now you can see here, this is a different view, okay. So at that place, you will see, there is a one conical projection is there this way, which is actually defining the scaling tubercle is here, okay. Now the another important point is about the feature is their attachment. And we know the two important muscles which are getting attached here, which actually involve with the thoracic outlet formation and clinically as a thoracic outlet syndrome is a scalenius anterior and scalenius medius. So in this software, you can go for the search option and you can add the, some different structure. But just like that, I want to just add here the scalenius muscle. Okay. I want to add here the what? Scalenius muscle. So I just have to type here scalenius anterior and because we are using here the left rib so we have to go for scalenius medius left and scalenius anterior on the left one so now you can see here the two ribs sorry two muscles they are add on the what the first rib you can easily see here 
this is the basically the view you can just <coughs> give to your students you can see so this is scale is anterior this is scale is medius both are here now the next thing is that between the anterior and the medius as we know there is subclavian vessels are there so you see here the subclavian artery so i am just adding here the subclavian artery and the vein on the left side vein and artery on the left side now you can see here so there is a one another view you can just clearly identify here look at here the second thing we can just add here the brachial plexus making the important part of the thoracic outlet so now you can see here the all the structure which are actually here they can easily make a correlation with the each other and you can easily demonstrate that that the superior surface of first rib is having the two attachment of the important muscle scalenus anterior scalenus medius between the two enter in the medius muscle they are providing the way for the subclavian artery which later on continue as a what axillary artery so suppose i just also make here the continuation is the axillary artery so now you can see here axillary artery this one is axillary artery and i just also making here the axillary vein okay so now you can see is this is the view okay and somebody can just see here that the, all the structure which are showing here if they added by the clavicle at the superior aspect they are now become the contained or the structure passing through thoracic outlet so same way suppose i just make the whole of the body together now you see here i am just making here the all the structure which are now representing here the thoracic outlet yes see this is the way so this is actually the one important feature of this software you can easily find out that you can easily demonstrate that this is a clavicle first strip the space between the thoracic outlet showing here the subclavian system the subclavian artery is here you see the tronchobrachial plexus and they are actually passing in between the two muscles scalenus medius and scalenus anterior so by this view you can virtually by the distant education or by just showing this particular software in our lab we can easily demonstrate the different structure this patella relationship with each other or you can say their attachment origin whatever so it is okay now another important point you can just go through it that is about the the muscular action so suppose we choose this skeletal anterior and if you see there is a one tab is going on and if you suppose i put the motion so you can see the different action of the skin is anterior can be seen in the three direction view so this this is a cervical spine flexion so you see here so the now the muscle is moving and you can say there is a cervical flexion is there so you can easily demonstrate the action of this muscle same way other action this is a cervical spine rotation so you can see here this is a rotation can be seen here okay so this is a different way that one any muscle can be seen here okay so this is about how the basically the different osteology part can be incorporated with the different bones with the muscles nerves vessel whatever so it is okay now same way if suppose somebody wants to just take an example of the one vertebra as a typical thoracic vertebra suppose i just put it here the sixth thoracic vertebra i just make here so i isolate here and you can see here this vertebra is showing here and we can demonstrate the different part of thoracic vertebra here now just see here this is the view the superior view is here in which you can easily demonstrate that this is a body part what is the part here is a lamina so you can see here this is the body the lamina you can mark here the lamina one is here they are the transverse process the spinous process are there and if you want to just also show the articular process you have to just make it a lateral view so in this lateral view you have to again just make want to make a rotation here so that's way if you rotate here you can easily find out the different articular processes 
Okay, so you see here, this is superior articular process and inferior articular process. Superior one and inferior articular process. So same way as we discussed in the ribs, you can also demonstrate any of the bones in the body with their special feature, with their muscular attachment, and with their any relation you want to just add up here. Okay, so this is something around the, about the osteology part is here. Now after that, now we are. I am just moving to the another one. How can we demonstrate the thoracic inlet, outlet, and what other structure is here? Okay, so coming to again, I am just making the whole of the skeletal system together here. Okay, and I am just off here the muscle part, the artery part, the venous system, nervous system. So this is another important feature that you, whatever the system you want to add here, we can simply make it. Okay. Now, but I am adding here the diaphragm because we need the diaphragm to show the thoracic outlet. So now you can see the diaphragm we added here. Okay. So at this particular view, what you can see, say you your students that this is the thoracic case with the diaphragm and space. So clearly they have the thoracic inlet and what the how the thoracic inlet get formed. We have to just make it again to make a one rotation here. Now you can see here. Okay, I'm just making the clavicle out. Okay, so properly demonstrate here the inlet part. So now you can see here. This is the thoracic inlet part is here. Okay, and how can you demonstrate here? Now you can see. So at this particular point, you can easily find out what is a thoracic inlet. So I am just making here the thoracic inlet marking. That posteriorly it is formed by the thoracic first vertebra. On the either side, it is the first rib with its costal cartilage. And end really the suprasternal notch or superior bedu merubristerna. So you can just easily demonstrate about the thoracic inlet. Okay. Same time, if somebody wants to just see what are the structure which are going to pass through the thoracic inlet, you can simply make the addition of the structure just like that. Suppose you want to make a trachea to make it here, just make a trachea, and you will find the trachea. Okay, you can see the trachea is getting added up here. You can see. Only the trachea can be seen here. And one other thing, important one, if you want to just see to go to a trachea, you see it's a hollow tube. And I am just going to plan to go inside. Just look at it. You can see. At the same time, if you see inside the view can be seen here where the carina can easily demonstrate it. So this is the trachea. Okay. Same way, if you want to see the esophagus, just write down the esophagus and you can add up the esophagus also. You can see. The esophagus showing just posterior to the trachea. So any structure <coughs> that can be added as an individual or as a system part, and that can be assess their relation easily. Okay, so you can just tell your student about the different relation. Okay, now coming to the next about the boundary of the thoracic outlet. So for the thoracic outlet, we should go for downside. Okay. So if you go for down, what you can see here, this is the basic the structure which can be demonstrated easily. Okay, at that time you can say the covering of the outlet here the, is actually by the way of down diaphragm. Okay, so you can see the diaphragm, and one important thing about diaphragm you can see that several openings can be seen here. If you see, this is the one opening can be seen here, and that is against the what T10. You see the T10. So this is the esophageal opening. So if suppose I put the esophagus here, now you can see here, the esophagus is showing here, which is passing through that.
now you can see here because at that time only the thorax part was on so there is no esophagus can be seen from the abdomen that's why so i just made a full body part so now you can see this is the one particular opening you can just appreciate here yes so you can see that it is going to meet with the stomach so this is a esophageal opening okay same way if you want to see the aorta which is passing through the t12 the aortic opening diaphragm you simply have to just type the aorta and you can see here The abdominal aorta. So you can see here, the abdominal aorta comes here, passing through the opening in the diaphragm at the T12 level. You see here. So this is the way how can we just make a adding of the structure to see the different structure property. Okay. So now again, same way you can see here the different structure which are actually making the Boundary for that. The anteriorly you can see here the xiphoid, posterior is the body of the T12 vertebra is here. Okay, same thing. So this is about the osteology part. Second thing, at the same time, if you want to demonstrate the structure which are present in the thoracic cavity, you simply have to know that this is a one is heart. So I just make a heart to add here, and then is the lungs, which are present in the pleural aspect. Okay, so you can see here the heart and lungs can be seen here. So now you can easily demonstrate about the thoracic cavity, the major structure. Same time, if you want to see that about the mediastinal part, suppose I remove the lungs on the one side. Okay. Just see here. Okay. And I am also making the this way. Okay. So if you go through the ribs, now you are approaching here. Okay. And at that time, you can also remove the this particular ribs okay so you can easily find out just look at here so in that case you can easily demonstrate the whatever the structure which are related to the heart posteriorly and really or whatever it is this heart is only showing without pericardium so if you want to add the pericardium we just have to make the pericardium and you can see here now the pericardium is added here just look at here so this is how the way we can go for the thoracic inlet, cavity and outlet. Okay. So that is about the more of toward the osteological part. Now come to the next part that is about the, the window dissection or you can say virtual dissection. That is very important part of this software or it is for the all the anatomists. Okay. So I'm just making the all the system on completely. So you can see here, I'm just going all the system present in the lower tab one by one to make this completely on. So all the structure are having start to add up here. Okay. And finally, we made the skin, the integrity system part. Okay. So now you can see here. So we have a now the one particular body, which is having the whole of the system, different parts built in together okay so now just take an example here we have to want to go for to reach to the intercostal muscles okay so if we want to go for a dissection layer by layer how can we approach here simply if you go for the right side panel here the tools they are showing here and if in the tool you can see the one tool is here that is a cutting tool that is what cut so if i just choose the cut part here you can see there are the three options they created one is having the simply the cut whenever i have to make a suppose any incision suppose i just make this incision so it will choose the which side has to just layer dissection either on the left or the right so i just put this one you can see the whole of the layer at that side is get released okay same way there is a one particular another dissection tool is here in which i have to just make a two line to be drawn and the area between the two is now can be, you can see, it can be removed. Okay. The another is a free tool. In this free tool, you have to just make a mark anywhere, how in a way, and you can just see the layer by layer dissection can be started. Okay. So we will now go one by one on this. Okay. Just a second.
So starting with the tool again. First we use the cut tool and I am just choosing either tool which is the midway tool is there. So making some more zoom that will, will help you in all the manner. Okay. So I am just making here the one line this side and one line this side. Okay. So you see, I remove the first layer and why I remove the first layer only the skin. And suppose I want to see what the structure I can be seen here. You just put here a cursor and you will find this is a pectoral fascia. And on the other side, left side, you can see the whole of the theoretical part is written here. Yes, this is a pectoral fascia is there. And I want to remove the fascia. So there are two things can be removed. One thing is simply just like that hide. So if I hide the pectoral fascia, wherever it is present is going to disappear. But suppose I want to make here again the dissection in the layer by layer. So I have to again choose the tool cut, make a way, select this way. And now I just make it here. So you see, I remove the pectoral fascia on that only the particular aspect. Now the next structure, which I can see here, this is a pectoralis major muscle. Yes. Along with the pectoralis major muscle, if you see more closely, you can see the some cutaneous lymphatics and the vessels also can be seen here with the nerves. So if you see the this green lymphatics, you just select here and you can find they are written here. These are the superficial lymph vessels of the thoracic wall. Okay. Same way, if you want to see what are the, these vessels are there, I'm just going more close to that one. Just see, I'm making a zooming in. You see here, this is interthoracic vein, the perforating branch of the artery and there's an anticutinous branch of the nerve. So this is the way, how can you go for the different structure can be seen here. So suppose now I want to go more further, I have to remove this structure. So I will make a selection of this structure because I have to go make a multi-selection because I want to remove these also the veins. And I just make a height. So I'm just making a height. Same way, now I have to remove the pectoral mason. So, at that time, suppose you are going layer by layer dissection. Okay. And suppose you make it the pectus major to be selected. You see, there are several options they created here in which the first option is the origin insertion. You can see here. Oh, I, I just make it this one. So that's why you will find that some particular bones can be seen here. And just where I click the origin, you will find it will show from where the origin is actually coming here. So they're showing here is coming from the what the sternum and the what the clavicle is here. Same way insertion. If you see the insertion, insertion on the humerus, they can be demonstrated. So at the same time, whenever you are just teaching about the some muscles or the structure which are coming in between the midway, you can also demonstrate their origin insertion. Their nerve supply. If you want to see nerve supply, you can see here the nerve supply. They can be seen here. You can see the nerve supply can be seen here. little pectoral nerve, middle pectoral nerve. And the important point you can see, you can see why there's some 3D view. You can just rotate them also. Same way, action, which I already discussed you with it. So if you want to see the action, go for the motion. And you can see, this is the medial rotation of the pectus major. Look at here. So various section, whatever. Okay. So now come to back again. So this is the way. Now I want to just go through the pectus major. So I have to make a one incision. Again, suppose I just make an incision in the pectus major in this free tool. Okay, so I just make it here. The free tool. Just look at here. I just make a free tool, and you can see the other structure can be seen closely. Okay. Okay. But now again, I am just making. It is easy to me to make it cut in this, the, but with the two lines, because it make it the incision more smooth. So now you can see. So at this place, when you just remove the pectoralis major, you will find that one fascia that is a clive pectoral fascia. Just look at it. I remove the clive pectoral fascia. Okay. And now you can see the some other muscle can be seen here. This is a pectoralis minor muscle. So again, suppose I'm just removing it because layer by layer get, get time. 
same time you will see the different structure can be seen here vessels and nerves you can see that thoracoacromial vein thoracoacromial artery branches the pectoral branches you see here there is a lateral thoracic vein along with the lateral thoracic artery okay there are the different nodes axillary nodes other structures are there and you can see there is one muscle serratus anterior can also be seen Dear participants, I think there is a technical glitch. We will wait for a few minutes. Hello. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Sorry. Now, uh, I think you can now see the screen. Yes or no? Yes. Okay, okay. So you can see here there are different group of lymph nodes can be seen here. They are the central or the lymph nodes are there. So I have to bring the lymphatics as a together you, as a whole. Okay. Now the important thing which you want to see here, just look at here. The different layers can be seen here. We remove the this one pectoral fascia. You see here the pectoral major muscle. Then we just go layer by layer. Okay. Now if you see here at that place, you can see the one rib. Third rib and the other rib lower down. The fourth rib can be seen here. So that's why there is a one particular space, intercostal space. And the first muscle which can be seen from the outside is the external intercostal muscle. So whenever you want to see this external intercostal muscle as a whole, we have to just make another way to make it isolate. And when you see it's isolate, now you can see here that all the intercostal muscle, external intercostal muscle can be demonstrated easily between the different ribs. Yes. And entrally you can see this is a External intercostal membrane can also be seen here. Look at here. So this is, you can see. So this is representing here the external intercostal membrane and this is a external intercostal muscle. Okay. Now same time, if suppose you want to just demonstrate their direction of the fibers, other things you can easily see. Look at here. If you go for this lateral view, you can see here the direction of the muscle fiber is a downward, forward, and medially. You can see. So you can see this way. It's going downward, forward. This way. Okay. Sometime somebody can ask about their nerve supply, which we'll discuss later on also. So you can see here, if you choose this muscle, you can just see nerves. So you see here. So this is about the nerves path. You can see here. The nerves can be seen here. And that is the intercostal nerve. We will see again in detail. You can see. If you go closely, you can see. The different nerves can be seen here. Okay. Now, so that is about the, how you can go for the extra intercostal muscle. Now, if you want to just go to deep to the extra intercostal muscle, you have to again make either the, cut or you have to just hide. So I again just choose the cut. So I just making it cut here. So one incision at the lower border of the rib and one incision on the upper border of the lower rib. Okay. So you see here. So now when you remove that cut, you can see the another muscle can be seen that is the internal intercostal muscle. The same thing now I have to just make isolate and you can see here the muscle can be seen here. This is the internal intercostal muscle. The fiber direction is right angle to the direction of the external intercostal. You see here, downward to the backward and posteriorly showing the external and sorry internal intercostal membrane. Okay. So same thing. Okay. Now coming to back here. In this place you see here they're showing here. Now this Next thing is we have to just cut this internal intercostal muscles. Again, choosing the cut option, making cut this way and this way. Now you see, 
After cutting this internal intercostal, you can see here the another muscle can be seen here, the innermost intercostal muscle. Innermost intercostal. And same time, you can see here there is one muscle, sorry, the lobe, superior lobe lung is showing here. So, what we need to choose only here the what innermost intercostal. Same way, we make an isolate, and you can see here showing the innermost intercostal muscle between the costal groove and the rib, only the middle part of the costal spaces. Now coming back, okay. Now one more thing you want to see here that we know that neurovascular bundle of the intercostal muscle spaces, they run in between the internal and innermost intercostal muscle. So if I just choose here, I am going some more zoom way and you can see here, this is an intercostal muscle and I'm just going to the rib and you can see here, one intercostal nerve is showing here, the vein and the artery they're showing here. So that can be seen. I will show you some another more important way how they that can demonstrate. So this is the way how can we go for the intercostal muscles. Same thing if you see here the some muscle, other muscle transverse thoracic so subcostal they can be also seen. But I am not going into detail now because this these are here. Okay. So this is about the intercostal muscle. They expand attachment, fiber direction, or supply direction. If you want to just see their attachment in their Bony part, you can also go just like the origin session. I just told you that you can see here. This is an innermost intercostal muscle attachment. The red is for the origin from the costal group, and blue is for the insertion. Let's look at here. Okay. Now, the next thing is about the intercostal nerve. Okay. So, to see the intercostal nerve, I'm just choosing a another, making another tab. Okay. So for that, what I am just making here, I will choose only the some ribs and costal cartilages and this way. Some vertebra. And I will remove the some other. Removing the scapula. Okay, so now you can see here. So I just choose the sum ribs and sub vertebra here. Okay. So what I want to just made it here, I have to add the some muscles and we know which muscle first external intercostal I am typing here. Intercostal muscle. Let's look at here. Okay, so I just make all the intercostal muscles here. Okay, adding here the intercostal nerve. Intercostal artery, both posterior and the anterior. Just a second. And same way, the intercostal vein. So we had the, all the structure here on the right side here. So now what we want to see, first we want to see here the what about the neurovascular bundles which are pretty present in the what? Deep to the intercostal muscle. And remember these were the intercostal external muscles. So we removed it. Okay. Now what you can see, this is the internal intercostal muscle. 
and through the internal intercostal branch, you can see these are the RMI, which are the later cutaneous branches or intercostal nerve. Okay. So suppose I am now again make, making a one cut here in the internal intercostal muscle. So just look at here. I'm just making a one cut here. Okay. So now you can see here that when you removed it, you can find the easy way that the structure which can be seen here, the intercostal nerve is here, which is present over the innermost intercostal and outside is the what? Internal intercostal muscle. Okay. Same way. Okay. Now, same way, if you want to see here the intercostal nerves, uh, sorry, artery in the vein, we have to add up again here. Well, we have to choose one by one all the branches. That's why he's getting the time. Okay, now you can see here. So what we can see here that we have added here the arteries in the beach. And now you can see here the artery in the vein, they are also getting passing through the what? The between the muscles. And what the muscles are here? You can see here the internal and innermost. So this is the way how can we just demonstrate whole of the basically the structure related to each other are there. Okay. Now next thing what we want to see that whole of the intercostal nerve. How can we see here? Okay. So I want to just demonstrate here the course of the intercostal nerve. Just so I am just making the removal of the, the ribs, which I do not want to make it here. So now just see here, we have a two ribs only. One is a fourth rib, one is a fifth rib. So there is a fourth intercostal space are there. So I am adding here the intercostal nerve of the right side. And that is the fourth one. Intercostal nerve. I choose the nerve and make its origin path and branches here. Now you can see. So whole nerve can be demonstrated here easily. Just look at here. So if somebody wants to see from where the nerves is coming, we have to just go on the posterior aspect. You can see the intercostal nerve, which is the entry primary MI of the fourth spinal nerve. If I just make it fade, you can see here that is coming from the spinal cord. Some rootlets can be seen here. You can just easily see that this nerve is coming here, running here on the surface here. And suppose I just also also made the muscle. We can also add the muscle and you can demonstrate the course. The firstly, the nerve is coming here in the intercostal space running here. And after that, it is giving one branch that we known as a collateral branch. You can see this is a collateral branch. Downside is the collateral branch, which is running parallelly with the what? The ribs. Finally, from the main trunk intercostal nerve, you can see the one branch is coming out. That is the intercutaneous branch. As we know, it is a cutaneous. So suppose I add the skin and suppose I just make a fading here. You can see the nerve is coming from that. So this is the way how can you make a relation with the skin also. And finally, if you see here that this nerve is coming anteriorly to make its continuation as a anterior intercostal nerve. This is here. Same way, if you want to add here the intercostal artery, okay. So I am adding the intercostal artery, the fourth space. Sorry to interrupt. Yes, ma'am. So time is finished. Minutes left, so 
Uh, only two minutes. I just I want to demonstrate only the intercostal artery. That is a good one. After that, I will just stop my presentation, madam. So now you can see it. At this particular view, you can see the whole of the intercostal arteries system. You can see it. So if you see here, we can easily demonstrate. Suppose I just make it this way view. You can see here, this is the one, the fourth posterior intercostal artery running in the posterior intercostal space. And you see here, this is the fourth entry intercostal artery, which is having the two superior and the inferior. Superior one is going to anastomosis with the what? Fourth posterior intercostal artery. And the entry one is the one which will anastomose with the collateral branch coming from the posterior intercostal artery. So if you want to see the posterior branch collateral, so you see there's a collateral branch also comes here. So this is the way how far we can just go through the what? The different aspect of the artery being in the here. So thank you for that. I'm just stopping here. We can go a lot of the experiment here, but because due to the positive of time, I cannot go further. So I think some, the aspect, how can just go to revolve around the software part that will help us for the teaching and learning. Thank you very much. Over to Prinka. Prinka ji. Uh, thank, thank you, Dr. Dushar. Thank you very much. It was a very interesting session, sir. And I'm sure uh, some of the faculty here would definitely want to try this teaching approach and to keep their students engaged. Um, so, sir, we have just one question in the Q&A. Yes, ma'am. I can see. Any applied anatomy can see. Okay. So, ma'am, the thing is, uh, Dr. Swati, I just see here. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, doctor. Okay. So, in this particular software, there is some, if you go for library, just see on the right side tab. In the library, if you see, there is a, some preloaded videos are there. You see here, atherosclerosis, cholesterol, so that's fine. You can see, just like that carpal tunnel syndrome. So if I just choose this one, you can see here, I'm just making here at. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So this is actually some preloaded videos are there on the different clinical aspect related to the anatomy are there. And I think they are adding one by one. You can see there's a lot of the list are there. You can see. So this is the basically some videos are there. Same way. If you want to see, I just want to just show you one important point of the, there are some courses are there, cadaveric images, cardiothoracic dissection layer by layer. So they are different sub lecture system is also there. Okay. Now, one more thing I want to show you that suppose, just to take an example, the radiological anatomy is very good here. Okay, I will show you the one the aspect. Suppose, I just make it here, the external oblique muscle selected here. If you go to cross section, you can see the different cross section they made it here. So I go to cross section three, let's lead it here. Look at here, this whole the section they can create it here. In which you can just rotate and you can go for one by one to see the which structure is it. Suppose you choose this here, what the structure are there. So that's why it is a cross section anatomy is there. So for the applied anatomy, what are you asking here that all the basic clinical aspects are not included here, but if we just incorporate here with the, some videos or by our own example, we can make it great. Just like that, I just show you here about the thoracic outlet. So if you show the stillness anterior medias with the subclavian vessel system, you can easily demonstrate thoracic outlet syndrome, how the basic nerves get entry, the lower trunk of the brachial plexus get compressed, primarily get compressed. So that is the way how can we go for it. Thank you, sir. Uh, so we would like to wrap up this session here. Uh, Dr. Dushan, anything else you would like to say? Was I want to just say one thing here that whatever you explore the software, okay, 
and if you give us this uh, you can say the time you will find the new things to always to explore okay because i am using this software uh, for last 4 years okay this software and i found it's more good way to just demonstrate the all the relationship of the structure together okay and it is actually only the additional whatever we are doing in our dissection lab it is not to replace the system okay whatever the we are doing the dissection on the real cadaver it is always the one thing which the real like is always real like but it is only to just making the adding feature to the our lab part or you can say the our teaching capacity is there so that is only my the point is there thank you sir thank you once again i would also like to thank all the participants here so we will be sending a one month free trial of this uh, software complete anatomy and an e certificate to all the participants so please keep an eye on your inbox we will uh, send this email in a few days also there is a short feedback form on uh, the screen when you leave the webinar so i request you all to please share your